Okay. How's everybody doing today? We are live on Zoom. We are live on uh, Facebook, and we are ready for flat top time. It's a beautiful Monday morning. It is the 18th of May. Welcome in, everybody. Hope you're doing well. We've got a full schedule for the week. Hello from Texas. All states in the house. Everybody's beginning to check in. All right. What do we got? We got a full week. Um, I got notes for the classes for the week. I got my drink, got my laptop, got my computer, got my tablet. So it's all feeling like it's all falling into place for another week. Um, Massachusetts, Connecticut, only states that don't have some form of back to the economy. Little by little, we're rolling out. I'm in Illinois. Some businesses are open, but uh, shops are not open yet. Salons are not open yet. Looking at a big week, flat top time this morning at 9, 11 o'clock is $100,000 hair cutter by the book. We talked about this concept for a class. We're going to dig deep into the book in the 11 o'clock hour. Tomorrow is revolution cutting in the morning. And at 11 o'clock after that is a program in product application. Paste or wax, gel or pomade. What do you use when and where for proper styling? We're going to talk about different products in the hairstyling category. Wednesday, classic skip guard tapering and 11 o'clock, be green. Uh, environmental and green initiatives for the barber and cosmetology industry. Thursday, Clipper Clinic, episode three. We dig further into the Clipper archives and have a little bit of fun with that. Um, and 11 o'clock on Thursday is making the most of a first-time client. Talking about leveraging the opportunity that is a first-time client showing up in your salon, showing up in your chair. Um, Friday, the end of the week, we're going to go to condensed cutting. Uh, that's an exciting program on a particular type of haircutting technique. And then um, we're talking money at Friday at 11 is tracking and statistics. We're going to do a deep dive into the financial end of the business. So we've got a full, full week. As you're getting ready to get back to haircutting, of course, Barbicide, Barbicide certification, all the Barbicide support documentation. You guys have probably heard an awful lot about infection control and disinfection and sanitation and all of these things over the last few weeks. We're going back, most importantly, we're going back to a client. We will be serving a client that is better informed about infection control, more aware of infection control, and more conscious of infection control than at any time in the history of our business or in the history of the modern understanding of infection control. So we really need to go back uh, to work in a very, very different way. And Barbicide leads us and leads the industry in supporting all of us in having all of those conversations uh, being prepared, being confident, being stocked with the right products, the right items, and everything. Barbicide.com. Uh, visit there on the web to get uh, all of the information that you need to be successful. Two other things I briefly want to talk about before we get into today's program. Some of you have started to see some of the comments and some of the advertisements and some of the promotion all over my social media for my Patreon community, my online community. There are links in all of my social presences. There is a link in my Instagram profile, uh, in my link tree for my online community. I want to invite you to join there. You can subscribe to different levels of content, but this is where the best of everything that I share really lives on the internet. All of these classes, once they're done live, go on to this online community in the academy. Right now there's over 24 hours of quality content uh, in that academy and I'm adding more every single day. Weekly videos, weekly audio posts, weekly blog posts, the Wednesday night support meeting for $100,000 hair cutters. All of this stuff all happens online in my Patreon community and you are invited to join me there. You can subscribe at what we call the nugget level that's where you're just getting into it at a low level and getting a little bit of content, or you can do what we call subscribing at the tribal level. To become a member of the tribe, it's 
back to work. For those of you that are not already on online appointment booking, please know the walk-in is history. Maybe forever, but at least for now, for sure, we will not be able to serve clients on a walk-in basis. We will not be maintaining a waiting room full of people. You need to be booking electronically. You need to be booking online. Booksy's the place to do it. Um, they're one of my corporate partners and one of my sponsor brands with which I work. Uh, again, go to my link in my Instagram and click on the Booksy link. Use the code Ivan Zoot, my name is my code. You get free booksy until July. That's more than a month, uh, about five and a half weeks of free use of the platform to get you up and get you running and get you set up and get you on board and get you comfortable with having these digital conversations with your customers to manage that business. So go to the link online. If you don't have the link, just shoot me a private message and I'll send you that link and we will get you started. So let's get started. Let's get started with $100,000 hair cutter. Today is May 18. Let's turn to May 18 and see what we have to learn today in $100,000 hair cutter. May 18 is day 138 of the year with 227 days remaining in the year. May 18, have an annual physical. One of the keys to a healthy hair cutter philosophy is the idea that you can't take care of them if you don't take care of you. Your overall health and well-being is fundamental to your life, your happiness, and the success of all of your business efforts. Schedule an annual physical. Talk to your doctor about your health and wellness. Discuss key indicators like blood pressure, pressure, cholesterol, and weight. Get a plan in place to address any health challenges or concerns. Make the time to take the time to take care of you first. Really an example of the breadth and depth of what goes on in this book. Are we talking about cutting hair? Of course we are. Are we talking about customer service? Of course we do. Are we talking about pricing and finance behind the chair? Yes, of course we do. And we're also talking about you taking care of you because you can't take care of them if you don't take care of you. That's $100,000 hair cutter. We're doing a deep dive into the book at 11 o'clock today. But in the meantime, that is your tip of the day. So let's go to Zoom. Let's go to Facebook. Pick a date. We're going to look at one more date during this program. And I'm going to go to uh, Facebook. There's a little bit of lag, we know, in people getting up on board on Facebook because of the electronic delay. But people are commenting. People are checking in. Good morning, everybody there, and good morning, everybody on Zoom. Who's got a date for $100,000 hair cutter? Zoom group or Facebook? Toss one. Let's go. We're going to play. Is that Thirachi? Says December 25. We're going to Christmas. Christmas is a special day. Christmas is the day we have to clean up after my birthday party. December 25, day 359, with six days remaining in the year. We're near the end of the day by the, uh, the year by the time we get to December 25, and we're waiting for a date to come up over on Facebook. Take the day off. Merry Christmas, folks. Today is the Christmas holiday. If you celebrate it, enjoy your holiday. If you do not observe this holiday, you still get to enjoy it. Here in America, we all stop for Christmas, even if it's not your holiday. The holiday season starts before Thanksgiving and runs at least through New Year's Day. We work extra hard serving clients at this time of year, so the holiday is a welcome break. Enjoy it with your family and friends. So interestingly, both tips, the suggested December 25 and today, the May 18, were tips related to taking care of you. And I think that's so important, and I don't think it's a bad coincidence that both of today's tips were really devoted to your own personal health and wellness, getting a physical, taking a break, and taking care of you first. Anybody on Facebook ordering, offering up a date? Anybody cough up a date from Facebook land? Nobody. Okay. Well, that just means, all right, here we go, Michael. Michael, October 1. Seems like we pick a lot of the same dates over and over again. October 1, day 274, 91 days remaining in the year. Crunch your September numbers. October 1 is actually a very important day in the calendar for hair cutters financially for a number of reasons. Number one, it is the beginning of the fourth quarter. 
like a football game in the fourth quarter. If you're ahead, you want to stay ahead. If you're behind, it's now or never. So the beginning of the fourth quarter in your haircutting year becomes an extremely important day. You're crunching your September numbers to see where you are year to date. You're looking ahead to see what's going to happen in this fourth quarter to know that I'm going to finish strong. October 1 is also technically four weeks away from what we'll call the beginning of the holiday season. We just referenced the holiday season, so it's also a very important time to think about not just how you're finishing your year, but do we have all of our ducks in a row with regards to everything we need to be thinking about to set ourselves up for the most successful, the most profitable, the most lucrative, and the most mentally capable holiday season behind the chair. Because it can either stress you out or it can lock you down for a solid year. So I think how we approach uh, the fourth quarter and the holiday season is all wrapped up in October 1. So while we've talked about number crunching, and October's a repeater, we've talked about that date several times throughout these programs, clearly it's an important day uh, in your uh, financial planning calendar. Thank you for offering that one up over on Facebook, and let us jump into the rest of the conversation. Don't forget to go online, get a copy of the book. Of course, they're in stock and they're shipping immediately, paper, digital, or audio. This is the key, guys, right here. For some people, a hope and a wish and a dream, and for other people, that's a stepping stone on the way to much bigger numbers. And it's a reality, guys. I've done it, you can do it, you should do it. All right, let's get into flat top time. We got our model, we got our mannequin, we're going flat top. We're gonna to talk about the technical execution of a flat top. We're gonna to talk about some of the nitty gritty details associated with flat top cutting. And I wanna make sure, um, go into monitoring the camera now. I just wanna make sure that we're gonna be seeing everything the way we wanna see it. Let's get the pad out because we gotta get a little bit uh, technical here with the discussion before we actually start cutting hair. Let's talk about the focus of the shape, bottom line, for cutting a flat top. Let's drop this camera down a little bit. Let's wait and see. Um, in Facebook land, I wanna make sure we're centered on the screen properly, but here's the deal, guys. We're cutting a flat top. And when we cut a flat top, here's our human head viewed from the side. When we cut a flat top, what's critical here is we're talking about the intersection of a horizontal top and a vertical sidewall. And where that comes together, we have what's called a weight corner. Look at my head. The top is somewhat flat, the sides are somewhat vertical, and although there's a little bit of a bevel to it, there's a corner there. That weight corner is fundamental and essential to maintaining that flat top shape. Do not, I'll say it again, do not, and I'll say it a third time, do not cut off the corner. If you cut off the corner, unplug the clipper, shut out the lights, go home, it's over, you blew it. You blew it, that's the whole thing. When we are looking at a face from the front, that's our client, and that's our head. We've got a horizontal top. We've got a vertical side. And with me looking right there, where the top and the side intersect, we have a corner. And the corner is everything. So what I'm gonna take you through is what is basically a four cut process for executing a flat top. Now, I think it's important to discuss to acknowledge and to recognize there are as many different ways to cut a flat top as there are people cutting them. And there are as many ways to wear a flat top as there are people wearing them. There's not just one flat top. There's not just one way to cut a flat top. There's not just one way to do a flat top. And I think it's important to recognize that. But what the, I want to emphasize is what I hope to share with you guys today and what I share when I demo this in classes and programs is what I believe to be the easiest way 
to execute a flat top. The easiest way to execute a flat top, especially for people who maybe don't have a super solid barbering background. Maybe they're cos pros getting into men's hair cutting. Maybe they're barber professionals that are newer in the game. But I don't want to share with you how I cut a flat top behind the chair. I got 33 years in the game. And one of the things I'm known for is rocking flat tops. I don't know if you see it, but my logo, my Clipper Guy logo, that's a clipper with a blade on it. It's also a flat top haircut on a face. There's also kind of a clipper in here, and it's also kind of a bit of a beard look. There's a lot going on there in that little Clipper Guy logo, but I'm known for this category, hopefully. Um, so don't necessarily confuse how I'm doing this with the only way to do it, or even the best way to do it, depending on your level of experience and skills. So let's get our mannequin out. Let's get into our flat top haircut. When we're cutting a flat top, there's four things we're going to do. There's four things we're going to do. We're going to taper in the perimeter. We're going to knock off the hair through the back and sides low. Being conscious of what happens at the widest point of the head. Where the head curves in, we want the hair to get longer, to maintain or to begin to create that vertical sidewall that is so characteristic of a flat top shape. So we're going to cut in the perimeter, number one. Number two, we're going to cut up from below, up from below, up from below, looking to get very, very vertical. It won't be a perfect square side just yet, but we'll start to establish that look and feel. Cut in the perimeter, cut up from below. We're going to cut across the top. In a lot of different directions and then we're going to cut down from above and the down from above cut really squares in the shape really locks things in where we wish it to be now a couple of secrets on flat top cutting secret number one it is easier to cut a short flat top than it is to cut a long flat top so I always make that point of wanting to be sure that a lot of our hair cutters don't get too freaked because the guy that comes in and says, I want you to cut me a flat top and I want a four guard on the back and sides. That's pretty long on the back and sides of a flat top. There are not a lot of flat tops out there, real, real regular flat top customers that are going to go that heavy, that are going to go that dark, that are going to go that long with a four. And when you do, one of the challenges is in order to square up the sides, you have to float off the head in outer space. You lose the ability to rest on the head to stabilize your comb and to build your shape. So it's much, much harder to cut a longer flat top. The exciting secret is it's easier to go shorter. When you go down to no guard, when you close up the blade to triple zero, and when you cut them in super tight, that's the real easy flat top to cut. So it's kind of counterintuitive. It kind of runs against what you might think, but hopefully it spares you a lot of freaking out about cutting these flat tops. Now, let's get started. When we cut a tapered haircut, we do what's called rocking or curving. Toe to heel, toe to heel. We get in on the toe, we get out onto the heel. We use that toe to heel cutting to cut that really, really nice tapered transition. Notice balance, stability, and control. I've got the clipper in one hand and on one hand, in one hand and on one hand, so that I can control it as I come up. And as I rock out like that, as I begin to put pressure on the heel and I start to develop a gap at the top of the blade, I get really nice, smooth, faded transitions. That is what it's all about to cut a beautiful tapered haircut. You look behind the ear, you can see that taper right there. That's so nice. It's exactly what we don't want to do to cut a flat top. Now, the other way, instead of curving out and away, is where we curve into the haircut. We follow the curve of the head. That's what we call contour cutting. Now, I'm gonna bring a friend back out here. Some of you guys remember him from the shave class. But when we cut a haircut like this, 
contour cutting, we follow the curve of the head. Instead of launching out, we follow up the curve of the head. We follow up the curve of the head. We follow up the curve of the head. Again, that's exactly what we don't want to do in the case of a flat top, because in the case of a flat top like this, following up the curve of the head compromises the corner. He's rounded out to the extent that we would not be able to get a corner on his haircut, either at the sides or at the back, to really get a flat top shape. So that's the real difference. So what we're going to do in the case of our flat top cutting, and I just want to check in on all my friends on uh, Instagram. Uh, Michael says, I hate cutting long flat tops. Yeah, exactly, buddy. You lose the ability to work off the head. You're totally with me on that. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come straight up. Instead of curving out and instead of following the head, we're going to come straight off. And I want you to notice how I move my hand as I do this. Do you hear that clipper? It's asking for oil. You hear that blade smooth out immediately? My clipper is closed. Good question, just came through on uh, Zoom World. Is my clipper open or closed? And the answer is, my clipper is closed in the close, closed, or triple zero position. So what I'm doing is I'm coming up from below, triple zero flat against the head, and when I get to the widest point of the head, I'm just continuing up straight off the head and towards the ceiling. I'm not flaring out and I'm not rounding in. I'm just coming straight up and off. So this is how we cut in the perimeter to set ourselves up for our flat top. Step number one is to cut in the perimeter. And in this case, it's a triple zero, and it's close all the way around. Now, we're gonna take off some of that back later, but later. For now, we wanna use that back to help us build our vertical flat top shape. Step number one was cutting in that perimeter with a special focus and emphasis on launching off the head. Now you'll notice it's looking and feeling a little bit weighty and that's okay because that's the hair we're going to need to establish up into our top. Step number one was cut in the perimeter and we've done that well. We've used the triple zero blade to work from the bottom of the haircut up and up and up creating a bit of overhang north of the parietal ridge of the occipital bone to allow us to begin to square in our sides for our flat top shape. I want to keep this running smooth and cool. We used a little oil. We put a little bit of clipper side on there. Here we go. Now, what I'm going to do next in squaring up the sides is I'm going to use the surface of the head to rest my comb and I'm going to work up from below. Notice my clipper is working up from below as I begin to vertically square in my sides. I'm holding my zoot comb with my thumb and forefinger, and now you'll notice that side is starting to get vertical. Watch what we're going to do on the overhang here. I would be looking in my mirror, I would be watching my mirror, I would be monitoring my client's head position, I would be looking forward into the mirror, and notice I rest the comb on the client and I roll the comb till the top of the tips of the teeth are pointing very, very vertical, very straight up. In this case, I'm moving up into the interior of the haircut and I'm very conscious of my comb position relative to my client's head. Very, very aware of where's my client's head and where is vertical in through the sidewall of this haircut? I'm coming up from below. Remember, step number one was cut in the perimeter. Step number two is up from below. Now we're going to take out some of this back later. I've already alluded to that. 
But for now, I want to square out this back just to take off excess and to help me get the feel, the look and the feel of the squareness that I'm after. Step number one was cut in the perimeter. Step number two was up from below. And this is beginning to feel very, very vertical. And that's nice. And that's going to serve us well. So what we want to do now is we want to prep mm -hmm. the top. We're going to prep the top by dampening the hair. I don't want it wet. I don't want it dripping. But I want it damp. I want it damp enough that I can control it with a blow dryer, with the appropriate brush, and with the appropriate tools. Now, I'm going to dampen the hair slightly, and I'm going to apply Firm Hold Styling Gel. This is Clipper Guy Power Gel by John Amico Professional Hair Care. This is my power gel. Now, I'm going to put a small amount, I don't need a lot, of Firm Hold Styling Gel in my hands and in his hair. And I'm going to work it into that top really, really good. Firm hold styling gel. You can't cut a flat top with hairspray. Hairspray makes hair stick to each other. That's how hairspray works. It causes one hair to stick to the hair next to it, and it causes the hair to hold up in that way. That's why we don't use hairspray. Hairspray will bind the comb. As the hairs stick to each other, the comb will not flow through the hair nicely. Now, notice I put that on. I wipe my hands. I'm wiping off my clipper. Maybe I'm going to put a drop of oil on my clipper. What I'm really doing here is I'm stalling for time. I'm giving that gel just a moment or two to set up, to tack up. A little bit of air coming out of it. It's drying just a little bit, a little moisture going away. Now I'm going to blow dry the hair. And these tools are very important. This is what I use to blow into position the top of my flat tops. And I got a special deal for you guys. Anybody goes online today and buys a zoot comb, you buy a zoot comb system, I'm going to give you one of these for free. It's a free bonus. It'll just be added in with your order. So if you haven't bought a zoot comb yet and you need and want one of these, because you're going to need and want one of these, I go to low heat. Now, I don't want to over talk the blow dryer. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, um, hang on a minute. Let's make the comments go away, and let's get back to um, the video so we know we're on track. Okay, um, I don't want to over talk the blow dryer. I'm going to go to hot air, low speed for control. I want to blow the hair straight up. It's hard to control very short hair with a vent brush, so I go to one of these little round brushes like this. So I'm going to go to high heat. I'm going to go to hot air, low heat, there we go, and I'm going to get this blown dry. Right now I'm focusing on getting the water out. Okay, I don't like to over talk the blow dryer, but what we try to do here is we try to blow the hair all straight up, not straight back, 
but really straight up from where it lives. And truthfully, the quality of the blow dry, did you say you put gel in first before you turn on the blow dryer? Yes, Sarah. We dampen the hair, we apply mm -hmm. firm mm -hmm. hold styling gel. Gel is water-based. Gel combined with the water is gonna let the hair soften and go where I want it to go. Now, firm hold gel is gonna dry with some hold, but it still lets me put the hair where I want it. And this is extremely important. Every extra second that you spend on the blow dry will take minutes off of your hair cutting because you're gonna position the hair successfully for what you're trying to cut. Now, old school secret. I use Firm Hold Styling Gel. We talked about no hairspray. There are some other folks out there very good, I do the same on a military base. Yeah, we start with firm hold styling gel. Now, other folks out there sometimes use water just to blow it with water. You can still control it with water, but you don't get some of the hold. Um, and there are people that put in like butch wax or crew wax, that's old school stuff. My classic wax fits in that same kind of category. It is completely soluble, it shampoos out clean, it's a lightweight wax. Personally, for flat top cutting, I use my matte paste. My matte paste has got a drier feel to it. It does not have water in it to the same extent, so it stays a whole lot more, uh, it, you know, now that I have the hair dried, if I put a water, a heavily water-based product in there, all of a sudden the hair's gonna collapse. I'm gonna lose that control. So I'm gonna take that paste, I'm gonna get that on my hands, heat it up a little bit, and work it through the hair. This is gonna give the hair a little bit of fight, a little bit of bite, a little bit of tenacity, and a little bit of resistance. It's gonna push out against my comb, but this is a drier, more kind of matte finish to it. It's not wet and shiny. And it's not gonna be soft in that regard. All right, uh, Facebook land, we're doing good. Looks like we just lost our uh, stream on Zoom, so I'm gonna have to uh, reboot the Zoom feed. We guys, you guys know how this happens. It happens to us a bunch. So be patient here, and we'll get Zoom unzoomed and resumed and back in. And we'll get back to it. But what we've done at this point was step one. We cut in the perimeter. Step two, we squared up from below. We dampened the hair, we gelled the hair, we blew dry the hair, we positioned the hair, and then we put a little bit of matte paste in the hair, that dry finished product, just to give the hair a little bit of tenacity. And you can see it's standing up nice, it looks good, and it's going to be ready to be cut very, very nicely in just a moment. Okay. All right, Zoomers, I'm back. You know how we go away from time to time like that when we have some connection uh, challenges. I gotta tell you, we had so much rain last night. I don't know what it was like in your neighborhood, but man, did we have rain last night. Uh, the lake outside was like three feet up over normal level, and that's a, that's a lot of water. Um, and sometimes when we have rough weather, we have some challenges with, uh, with the web. But anyways, triple zero on the blade. In, cut in the perimeter up from below. It's time to cut across the top. And you got to know what this guy's head's like. You got to know how tall his head is. We're going to start at the front and we're going to carry our way straight back. You got to know that you can clear top dead center. You're going to turn your clipper over so you go to underhand position. You're going to close the blade up so you're in the triple zero close or close position. You're going to hold your clipper comb with your thumb and forefinger like this, not with your thumb on the back side like that, thumb on the bottom so you can roll it to flat. And we're going to come in and we're going to level off what we call our 12 o'clock cut. That's it right there. 
I came in at the nose. I came in straight in at 12 o'clock at the front of the haircut. Once that 12 o'clock cut is in place, we're gonna work our way around the clock. We're gonna work our way around the client's head to begin to flatten out the shape that is the top of that haircut. And you'll see we come in from the front coming over the top like that and we begin to lock in and knock in that flat shape. We're looking pretty good there. And this is where the positioning through the blow dry of distorting the hair becomes real critical. We don't want that hair over pushed one way or the other, over directed in any given way, so that it's easy to make that cut. I notice I started at the front and I worked my way out both sides. When I've got that front squared in, I can go to the side of the haircut now. I turn him square to the mirror. I use my mirror and I begin to come in and level him off across, taking me all the way to the middle of the head. Now I'm gonna spin him again. I don't walk the chair, I stay in one place and I move the client and I continue to use my mirror as a powerful cutting tool. Now remember in a classic shop, I have two mirrors. I have my mirror over my station and I have my mirror on the opposite wall so I can use those mirrors to help me reference the client's head and the client's position. Now at this point, I've cut that whole front and top and it's looking pretty level. I'm kind of happy with how it's looking, but we want to take off a lot of this back. I'm not going to bother leveling out the back if I know it's going to go away. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to the center back of the head. At this point, I have cut in the perimeter up from below and I got two thirds of the top squared away, but the rest of that top is going on the floor. So here we go, I'm gonna come in low, I'm gonna come up to the center, and now I'm gonna come all the way up to top dead center. Now you'll see what's happened there. I cut that groove up the center back of the head. This is now gonna become my guide length as I work my way out to one side and out to the other. Watch what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna come up and in, and I'm gonna come up and in, and as I start to round out the side, I have pressure on a portion of the blade as I start to build out to a corner. And as soon as the hair gets long enough, and I think we're there now, that I can get my comb in on it, I begin to build that corner up and in. So where we're heading is what we'll call a horseshoe flat top. There will be no hair at the center back and there will be a ring or a horseshoe of hair around the front. Now, we still have a lot more to cut from the sides of this guy, but that's gonna be step four and we're not quite there yet. We rounded out that back corner. We're gonna do it again on this side and you'll notice I start with the blade on the head, and as I get up, only a portion of the blade is resting on the client. More of the blade is coming off of the head. Now that I can get my clipper comb inside of it, I will do that. And we continue to work from a rounded back into a strong corner. Now start to look at that in perspective. We've rounded out the back to level out the front. Rounded out the back to level out the front. Now, this is where we get to step four. If you look at him from the front, he's kind of puffy in the corners. He's kind of flared in the corners. We cut up from below in the perimeter, up from below, we cut across the top. I'm gonna to redirect the interior hair down. Notice what happens when I do this. Do you see that fluffy little ridge of hair right there? 
I'm going to turn it just a little bit so you get a better look at it. When I comb this down from above, there's that fluffy little ridge of hair right there. But by combing this down from above, and I'm going to go past vertical, I'm going to go from straight up to slightly tipped in at the sides here to complement that horseshoe shape. But I take off that overhang. And as soon as I take off that fluffy little ridge, you'll notice when I turn him front to you, how that side has now squared in beautifully. Look at the difference, be, I'll get out of the way. Look at the difference between that side and that side. We're still puffy on that side of the haircut, but this side has started to take on that shape. I'm just angling this in and notice I'm a little bit over square as I bring that in like that to create that shape. Okay, let's do the other side. Let's go to the other side. Let's redirect this interior hair down from above, looking for that ridge line of hair along the spine of the comb. And let's square that in. Now we're really starting to see that shape fall into place well. The camera angle makes it a little tougher just to see how that is or isn't looking. But one of the things we're going to have to do now is we're going to have to lower that top just a little bit. Now, this was sometimes freaks some people out. I'm dusting off any loose clippings because I want you to get a real feel for what we have here. We should see when we look down from above on him that we've got a bit of a horseshoe here. The back rounds out and up into the top. This empty top is sometimes referred to as a landing strip. And because of the curve of the head on this mannequin, it stops at top dead center. He's got a fairly strong front hairline, so it launches straight through, but that top is a little bit long and a little bit tall. So what I wanna do, kinda chin him up a little bit to get a look at him, He's a little high on this side, that needs to be tweaked. But I wanna take that front down by about half. So this is gonna camp forward slightly. It's not gonna be horizontal, it'll be flat, but it's gonna tip forward just a little bit. Now, I am going to make an attempt to get him a little tidier, a little cleaner, and then I'm gonna share with you what is probably the single most important secret to cutting flat top. Should you start the top back section if their apex is tall so the front will match up? Not necessarily because we're gonna take this front down. Right now we're horizontal. We're gonna tip forward on it just a little bit. That's what I'm talking about here. Um, some people, their apex may be high like that, but we still wanna level them down to get, because if, if their crown is high, you might have a whole nother half inch of hair along this front. And they'll look in the mirror and they'll say to you, oh, that flat top looks great, but can you make the front shorter? And you're thinking, well, basic geometry, if your top is high right here, the front can't be shorter, yet still be horizontal. It can be shorter, yet still be flat, but it's gonna tip in just a little bit. And that tip in is what we're gonna be looking for. So we're gonna take a look at that. Let me just tweak down this side just a little bit so that we're a little more level. And let me show you what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is coming into that front a little bit. But before I go there, I wanna show you the big flat top trick. The big flat top trick is this. For those of you that have been with me since the beginning, we cut in the perimeter, we cut up from below, we paused, we wet it, we dried it, we set it up to cut, then we cut the top. We're gonna wet it again. We're gonna dry it again before we cut it again. We're gonna wet it again. I don't need to add more gel, the gel's in there. I don't need to add more matte paste. 
the matte paste is in there. But I do need to wet it and dry it again. And here's why. There's a process. Wet it, dry it, cut it. And then we wet it, we dry it, and we cut it again. Because as soon as I wet it and dry it, and let's go in there and do it. As soon as I wet it and dry it again, there's going to be stuff sticking up and popping up and all goofy. You may not be able to see it on the camera, but I can certainly see it here. There's a whole world of stuff that is porcupining up outside of the shape of the flat top. So here's my question for you guys out in listener land, for you guys that are watching this. You saw me wet it and dry it and cut it. And then you saw me wet it again and cut, dry it again and cut it again. The question for you is how many times will I execute the cycle, wet it, dry it, cut it, when I'm cutting this on a client in the shop on a real person? I will wet it and dry it and cut it, and then I will wet it and dry it and cut it. How many times will I go through wet it, dry it, cut it? Does anybody know the answer to that? Does anybody know the answer to how many times will it be necessary? for me to repeat the cycle of wet it and dry it and cut it. Tamara says three. It's a decent guess. May not be the right answer though. How many times will I wet it and dry it and cut it? Tyler says, until you make sure you're done. Sarah says, as many as you need. That's right. I will wet it and dry it and cut it. And then wet it and then dry it again and cut it again, twice. Then I will wet it and dry it and cut it. And I will continue to do that until the one time when I wet it and dry it and there's nothing to cut. Now, first answer was correct for me. Most of the time that's three. I wet it, dry it, cut it. I think I'm good. I wet it and dry it and I clean it up. And the third time, I am in fact good. Most of the time. Every once in a while, if I'm chasing a trouble spot, I'll take a fourth, and that fourth might even be partial. I may just come in and wet a piece of one side and redry and redirect. So, the key to really doing that drying is these little round brushes. Now, here's the deal. If you buy my combo pack, my three pack, gel, paste, and wax, because we use gel to get it blown up, we use paste as a cutting aid, and we're gonna finish it with a little bit of classic wax. So there's your three-piece set. If you buy the three-piece set, you get the brush for free. Or if you buy the zoot comb system, you get the brush for free. Gotta order between now and midnight tonight. Go online, get your tools, or get your liquid tools, to make flat topping like this beautiful. Now, there's one thing I wanna to do to kinda of finish this off. I wanna take that front edge down by half. I said this before, now you're gonna see it happen. I'm gonna come in, and when I do that, when I whack off that little piece of the front, people are like, oh my God, you ruined it. No, I'm gonna carry this back now. And I want you to see how nice this is going to look because we're taking that front edge down by just a little bit. We come up through the top. And now we came forward on him to get a little bit of height out of that front edge. We've got that back rounded out, we've got that top flattened up, we've got that corner nice and strong, and lastly, we've got a little bit of a front pitch. We came past the apex to drop this down towards the front just a little bit. 
and he's a little bit high in his right corner. Opposite of my hair. When my hair is cut because of my cowlick, I'm a little bit high in the left corner usually. But hey, everybody's a little bit different. Look at that. Nice. So the basic steps involved in cutting a flat top. Cut in the perimeter, up from below, wet it, dry it, across the top, clean up the back, tip in the sides, down from above, and then I lowered the front. You won't use all those steps if you're not necessarily lowering the front, but you'll use the majority of those steps to get that in place. And the single biggest secret to all of this is the repeating the cycle, wet it, dry it, cut it. I tell people all the time, if you sit down in a chair in a barber shop and the guy wets it, dries it, cuts it, and takes your money, you're probably going to be disappointed. You're probably not going to have a flat top that's flat on the top. Because to wet it, dry it, cut it, and send them away, when it gets wet in the shower the next day, he's going to have poppers. He's going to have porcupines. He's going to have little stuff sticking up. And it's not flat. Wet it, dry it, cut it, cycle. Wet it, dry it, cut it, cycle. Wet it, dry it, cut it, till there's nothing to cut. That's going to get you a flat top that is, in fact, flat on the top. Q&A, we got a few minutes left here before we knock it off. And guys, remember, 11 o'clock today is $100,000 hair cutter by the book. We're going to do a deep dive into the $100,000 hair cutter book. I don't know what we're going to talk about because you guys are going to, you guys, thank you, Scott, you guys are going to be picking the dates that we focus on. You're going to be picking where we go and what we talk about throughout the program. And basically, it's about rewarding involvement and engagement. If you're participating, you get to pick the dates. If you're sitting quietly in the background and you're not saying anything, you don't get to pick the dates. So we're going to really be heavily relying next hour at 11 o'clock on a lot of engagement and interaction coming from all of you. So thank you all for joining us and thank you all for being here. If you're digging this stuff, guys, if you want so much more of this, patreon.com slash Ivan Zoot. That's my community page, my team page online. You know where to find me there. Lots of good stuff. This flat top video will be available for viewing for the balance of the day till about dinner time. Then it's going to come down and we're going to go over to, it'll be live on Patreon. And it'll live there forever, available exclusively to my online community. So if you want to be a part of that, you are invited to join us all right there. You want your flat top brush, place your order today. Get the three-piece combo. It's called the Clipper Guy Collection, I think. Uh, we'll throw a brush in for nothing. Or get a zoot comb. We'll throw a brush in for nothing. Thank you for being here. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for participating. Thank you, Facebook world, for joining us for this one. It's always a fun day when we're whacking a flat top. I always have fun doing it, and I appreciate you being here. We'll see you again at 11 o'clock. Take care. Bye-bye.